Okay, folks. We're right? We're rolling? Okay. The current tracking of Cyclone Yasi has uh, the cyclone uh, set to land slightly closer to Cairns than we anticipated this morning. Uh, the cyclone is continuing to intensify and we continue to expect to see it uh, around the 1am mark on Thursday morning. After uh, uh, quite a bit of work between the by the Bureau of Meteorology and uh, storm surge experts this afternoon, uh, we have been able to see a slight revising down of the likely level of the storm surge and councils have been able to do more precise uh, mapping of those areas where they will need mandatory evacuations. Councils uh, from Cook uh, through to Hinchinbrook have uh, now all uh, implemented mandatory evacuation directions uh, and the people who are out door knocking, talking to people in those areas about relocations will, in the high risk areas on the revised storm surge figures, uh, be issuing directives for people to relocate. In the first instance, people will be required to make arrangements uh, to relocate with friends, family or workmates. We do understand that there will be some people in some of these areas who are unable uh, to source accommodation with a friend or family member, including some people who may be visitors or tourists to the region. Cairns, of course, is a very big uh, tourism destination. Uh, um, uh, arrangements are being put in place to provide uh, accommodation emergency accommodation for those people who are unable to access uh, other forms of uh, friends or family to relocate with. People who are unable to find uh, other accommodation should register with the following uh, phone line uh, to alert police and authorities to their need for accommodation. 1300 993191. That's 1300 993191. Uh, facilities will be put in place and activated either overnight in some cases or early tomorrow morning. Uh, in relation to the evacuation of the Cairns Base Hospital and the Cairns Private Hospital, 11 planes have now been sourced to undertake this exercise. Two of those are uh, Australian Defence Force planes. The others include uh, Royal Flying Doctor Service facilities and the Government Air Wing. The uh, first plane will arrive in Cairns at around 7pm this evening and we will expect to see then a steady round of flights landing and taking patients and bringing them to Brisbane. So this is a large exercise that will be conducted throughout the evening and into the early hours of tomorrow morning. Can I say that, of course, we understand that not only will patients be anxious about this, but their friends and family and loved ones, uh, this will be quite a nervous time. Can I reassure them that uh, these evacuations will be done by experienced people who regularly evacuate uh, people in extreme medical circumstances. The Royal Flying Doctors Service, for example, is often evacuating for medical assistance some of the most, uh, some of the sickest and uh, most dangerously ill patients in uh, Queensland and do so safely almost every day of the week. Uh, the, the hospitals that these patients are going to are major Brisbane hospitals uh, where arrangements are being made for their particular needs. So can I just say to people, of course, we understand that this will cause some anxiety. It is only being done to make sure that very ill, very vulnerable patients are in the safest place possible. Uh, well, as I said, the first plane was due to arrive in Cairns. Uh, around 7pm, you could expect with uh, patients who are ill, uh, some time will be taken to load them on and then about a two-hour flight. So I would expect that we'd start to see the first planes land around 10pm uh, tonight. Premier, do you have any geographical uh, points as to where this tidal surge could extend now that it's been revised inland in metropolitan Cairns, like Red Lynch down to Gordon Bar. Could you give us any geographical sure. pointers as to the spread of that expected surge, even though it's been revised? I'll invite uh, the uh, Deputy <laughs> Commissioner to make some specific comments. I should just add that we have, in addition, uh, now evacuated 216 people from nursing homes in the region. Thank you, Premier. Um, can I firstly say how grateful I am uh, to the mayors of uh, all of the uh, areas from uh, the Cookshire down to Hinchinbrook for having a consistent view um, on the safety of the communities that they serve. 
Um, this is a very, very important decision in, in committing to mandatory evacuations. I hope that the communities in those areas, in the high-risk storm tide areas, uh, will now see the potential danger that they're in and take heed of that and, in fact, self-evacuate way before they're ever asked to do so. Obviously, there's a big job in, in going to all of these areas um, and talking to the residents, uh, giving them information and uh, helping them to make decisions in relation to the mandatory nature now uh, that has been committed to by all of those mayors. Uh, in terms of Cairns uh, specifically, there is very, very good data available to us. And in fact, uh, only about half an hour ago, I was looking at the uh, electronic maps of Cairns, uh, which show uh, inundation up to the two metre mark. And uh, with the revised figures from BOM, I understand that that will be uh, in the vicinity of uh, the number of houses or the areas that will be inundated. Now, I can't give you specific seats. Uh, street names, but certainly um, I have seen the map and it is still quite extensive. Can you give us an example of uh, a region, the northern suburbs, beach suburbs through metropolitan Cairns? Can you give metropolitan you Cairns has got a significant amount of inundation at the two metre uh, mark uh, above uh, HAT, which is that highest astro astronomical and tide. How far north and south? Uh, well, certainly all of that CBD behind the CBD area and to the uh, south of the CBD. Um, to, the, to the inlet um, is certainly inundated uh, at that level. But I need to stress we need to wait until we get the final new analysis uh, by BOM through. We've had verbal advice in relation to their revised figures um, uh, and whilst it is, it is good news in one way, it is less than what we had originally been told um, only a day ago because of the changing circumstances, um, it is still uh, dangerous in terms of the amount of inundation in that area. Thanks. In terms of the mandatory evacuations, have you ascertained how many people specifically will be affected? Um, some of the, um, the shires have very, very specific um, mapping capability and statistics on this. Um, uh, for Cairns, uh, in, just in the CBD and northern areas, I think the figures are in the 9,000 people range, um, but that's at 2 metre HAT. And as I said, um, I don't want to be too specific because with the new uh, figures from BOM, uh, obviously that may, may differ uh, to a degree. But certainly uh, the uh, Cairns LDMG um, is banking on uh, you know, significant thousands of people needing to be uh, evacuated out of those areas. Tony, what are the alternative arrangements for Cairns for medical help? Uh, sorry. The alternative uh, medical provision will be in, in Cairns... Uh, because of the uh, temporary closure of the hospital and the evacuation, will be at Fretwell Park Sports Complex uh, on Robert Road in Edmonton on, in South Cairns. It, an emergency department will start operating out of the Fretwell Park Sports Complex from 9am tomorrow morning. So the hospital is still open overnight for emergency department services, but from 9am tomorrow morning, Fretwell Park Sports Complex in Edmonton will be the site of... Uh, medical and emergency services and that uh, is clearly being fitted out uh, this afternoon and overnight. When you say so a slight... That one location? Yes. It's, very, it's a very large complex. When you say a slight uh, decrease from a day ago, does that mean you're expecting less than a high-level Category 4 now? No, no, the, it's not a decrease in the uh, uh, intensity of the cyclone, but the modelling shows that because we're now more confident that it will arrive at low tide, that... Uh, and modelling around winds and other uh, information, the, t the storm surge will be lower than originally anticipated. There will still be a storm surge. It is likely to be around the two to two and a half metre above the highest tide, and that's still a very serious uh, situation, but it will affect a less number of houses than a, t than a higher storm surge. What was it going to be? Really? There were some parts where it could have got to six metres and others where it would have been four. So it's come down significantly, but it will nevertheless impact, as you heard, still significant numbers of people. What is the latest status with the cyclone? Recategory and speed. Um, certainly our latest advice is that it is a Category 4. It is close to Willis Island, um, uh, in fact past Willis Island on its way towards the coast, um, and it is still tracking to near Cairns. It's tracking just slightly north of where it was tracking this morning if you go and have a look at the 2pm uh, the track.
And when will you get the specifics on exactly where it's going to hit? Uh, I think someone said earlier today that you, at some stage you get a you know, 50 metres. No, 50k. 50 so uh, tomorrow morning's uh, cyclone modelling will uh, give a level of precision around a 50 kilometre either way mark. Now, that's still quite a large margin of error, and that's the nature of these uh, that sort of events. At 5 pm tomorrow afternoon, that will be revised further, and we would hope uh, again to be in a narrower band. Uh, these uh, these Large uh, cyclones obviously can move uh, even a small amount and affect a very different and significant area. OK. Thank you, folks. I just urge everybody again, if you are contacted by emergency services or police and uh, asked to relocate yourself and your family, please take this warning seriously. This is a very significant and serious uh, and potentially life-threatening cyclone.